everyone can still hear and see. Is that correct? Okay, then we're going to go ahead and get going. Welcome. This is Stacy Croninger, and I'm here tonight with Brooke, and we're excited to have you here for our Studio U online class. This one is Bound by Love, and we're going to talk about year-end books or books that are years in review. You don't have to at the end of the year. You can start it you know, in January if you want to, but basically how to review your year and show off what you did for the year. As I mentioned, we have Brooke here. She's going to be uh, showing us some studio things. Chelsea's behind the scenes for us tonight, answering questions and different things. And we're going to do things just a slight bit different tonight. Um, we want to uh, give you an opportunity to get some of your studio questions answered by us showing you those things. So if there are things that you've been dying to see how to do them in studio, if you will send that question over, then when we get to studio time, Brooke is going to show some of the basic things that we need to go through, and then I'll start feeding her with some of the requests that people are asking to see. So again, if there's something you've wanted to see how to do in studio, make sure that you send that question in. If you have a question that's just about you know, what was just discussed or whatever, Chelsea will answer those. But if it's a request that is specifically for how to do something, then she's going to ignore those until um, we get to studio. But to start our night off, we want to give away some points. So the first person that's going to win points tonight is Sharon Stackhouse. You're going to win 20 Heritage Makers points. Thanks for showing up early, Sharon. We'll get those put into your account in the next few days. And to start our evening off, we are going to uh, look at some inspiration. Oh, but before we do that, I want to remind you, we have our last sale going on right now. And it's 10% off on calendars, 11 by 14 prints, and notepads. So you want to make sure and take advantage of that. The sale ends on December 14th at midnight mountain time, so make sure you get those in. Also, tomorrow the 11th is the deadline for... Uh, two-day shipping. So make sure that you, um, if you were hoping to do any kind of two-day shipping, that you get your orders in by midnight mountain time tomorrow night. Okay. So now we're going to talk about uh, your review storybooks. There's lots of different approaches to doing your, uh, re your review of the year, whether you're doing it chronologically so you do January, February, March, if you do um, a book that covers the entire year, or maybe you do a book a month, or maybe you do it by occasions, or you do it by a child. There's lots and lots of different options. So we're going to show you some of those options tonight. I'm going to start off with some templates that are in the gallery right now, and then we're going to show you a couple of new ones that will be available next week. So start off with this one is Family Snapshots. Now this one comes in a variety of sizes. The one I'm showing you is 11 half by 8 half. It's also available in 11 half by 8 half lay flat, 8 by 8, 12 by 12, and 12 by 12 lay flat. There's also, if you like this cover, a 12 by 12 postbound album. This is a basic um, one. It uses basic art, so you don't have to have the Premiere account to use it. And the idea behind it is that you're going to take all those favorite pictures that you had through the year. Maybe you had a special photo shoot. Maybe you have family occasions, but you're going to drop them into this fun and simple grid system. Now, the great thing about this is you can use these squares for anything you want, whether it's photos, journaling, if you want to drop in embellishments or papers. So if you don't have, let's see, you would need six photos for this one. Maybe you only have five. Then go ahead and put um, a cute flower in here or snowflake or whatever it is that fits with the pictures that you're doing. But again, this one is perfect for just having some random photos that you maybe took during those months. It is organized by month, so you'll see that this is the opening page here, and then we have our January spread, and there's a spread for each month in this book. Another possibility is top 10. Okay, So this one, it's going to go through and talk about the top 10 highlights for each month. So we have our cover. And then here is the January spread. So it's just a really fun way to show what happened during the month. You'll notice that the pictures don't have anything to do with each other. Uh, the journaling is what ties them together. So you can see that number two is we love having our cousins over to play. 
Um, number 10, Matthew loves playing at the park. So you just pick some things and decide, and maybe decide as a family. Maybe it's just yours that you go through and decide that, you know, these are your top 10 favorite things. But it's a great way to capture those um, additional things. Here's the February spread for you. So you can see this one again shows uh, people, but you also see that homemade chicken pot pie Texas style. Mm, might need that recipe. Uh, that's number 10 on their list. So great way to capture all the favorites from uh, the month throughout the year. This next one is organized by family favorites. Okay, so these are going to be favorite things that they've done throughout the year. So we have our cover here. This one is a premier design. It's uh, shown in a 12 by 12. We have 8 by 8 and 12 by 12 lay flat in this one. And I'm sorry I didn't mention the previous one that it had a variety of sizes and it was also premier design. So in the family favorites, uh, this one has an opening page here that explains a little bit about uh, what happened during their year. It has some family photos from a photo shoot. And then it dives right into what their favorite things are throughout the year. So their first one was camping. So it has pictures of their camping trip. And it has these squares that you could use for um, putting in additional photos, but in this example that Roxanne's created, it has these fun embellishments. And then here's their journaling that tells about why camping is their favorite. And these are all two-page spreads. I just grabbed one page off of each of these spreads. This next one shows number two, which is road trips. So um, maybe it's not a big travel trip, but you guys just enjoy going out on little day trips. To me, that's what a road trip is. Maybe road trips in your family is vacation, so that can work too. Um, how about game night? Something that we don't think about. I don't know about you, but a lot of times I feel like I have to record the big memories, those big occasions like birthdays and Christmas and things. But their everyday activities are a fun thing to capture as well. So game night is a, a fun thing to do. Um, and so that was number four on this list. Up next, this is a different approach to the year. It's organized by month, but it's uh, count your blessings. And so they're taking a look at what the things are that they're grateful for in their year. And so it starts out with the explanation about, you know, the wonderful year they've had and, and talking about their blessings as they go through. So we have our cover on the left-hand side and the opening page on the right-hand side. And then there are two-page spreads for every month. And this one um, does not have any photos pre-filled to see as an example. It just has your place photo here um, items. So all these little spots that say place photo here, you just uh, click on it. It's locked. And you drag and drop your photo into that location. And again, as I've mentioned, you don't have all these photos, no problem. Put in another piece of uh, cardstock. Put in another embellishment. Add some more journaling. It's yours, and you can customize it however you want. That's the great thing about these uh, designs. They're there to help you along. Now, I also want to point out that this particular design is also basic, which is nice. Um, it's got a more simple approach, but that sometimes is lets the photos really shine. So um, that's what January looks like in this one. And here's what February is. Again, very simple, clean design so that you can just drop in your photos. There are a lot of photos on this one, but you can easily remove these three guys here and put one piece in that's maybe cardstock with some journaling on it. Um, so customize it however will work. These next books are uh, Shine Throughout the Year. Um, and these have been so popular that you'll see that there's uh, three different years versions here. Um, the difference is the color of the covers. The insides are identical. So if you like the purple, and it says 2012, you just open that up and put your new year on it. So you don't have to worry about uh, coming up with something totally new for those. Um, but you'll see the designs are identical, just some different colors. Drop in your photos and go from there. So let's look at what the inside looks like. And again, this is Premiere showing you 8 by 8, 12 by 12 is also available. So inside, it's organized again by month, um, but this one has several pages per month. And it's really, actually, I'm going to take that back. It's not per month. It's more per season. Okay, so we start off with winter. And there's about six pages, I believe, in this one for winter. And so here's all your winter pictures. Um, these are the first two-page spreads. Then you have another two-page spread. 
and an additional two-page spread. So it allows you to put in lots of different photos. And if you don't have snow in your area, just swap out those snowflakes for maybe seashells if you have, uh, you're near the ocean. Um, it can still be your winter photos, even if it isn't snow-based photos. Uh, when you get into spring, then it's more spring-like colors. And there's, again, six pages for spring. And then you get into summer and winter. So this one, rather than being by month, is by season, which gives you a little more flexibility in maybe you took a picture in March, but it's, you know, it's, it looks better next to something that was taken in April. So you can kind of mix and match your photos here. Now, I'm going to um, unmute one of our people here. I'm actually going to unmute a couple people. And I believe we have Helen Watt uh, on the phone. Helen, are you on the phone? I am. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Yay, the next uh, template that we're going to show is actually Helen's idea, and it's called Toddler to Teen. And I'm going to let Helen actually talk about uh, what she her vision for this one is. So Helen, take it away. Well, thank you so much, Great Stacy, for introducing me and, and for inviting me to be a part of this call. I've been helping people for about 20 years with photos, and one thing that's been consistent is that not everybody has their pictures organized, but everybody wants to do an album. So this is the perfect solution when you want to celebrate somebody, especially for graduation. Now, I know we're a little bit ahead of the season for graduation, but what a great time to start working on this and have it all ready to just finish up uh, this spring. So the concept is that it's not put together chronologically like the books that Stacy was just sharing with you, but it's put together in theme. So um, if you'll just uh, flip the slide, Stacy will show them what that idea looks like. So here's a before and after of one of the themes, which is birthday time. Now, if you've got somebody going from birth through high school or college graduation, they, you know, if it's high school, they're 17, 18 years old. Um, so they've had 18 birthdays. You're looking at just one picture from each of those birthdays. Um, it might be the theme birthday that they did. Maybe they went rock climbing, or maybe they got a new car, or maybe they had a cake smash. But you're just looking to put in one favorite picture from each thing. That's also super useful for people that have a bunch of old scanned picture or old pictures that they want to scan in, because they they are just looking for that one one picture. So you can see there's tons of photo spaces on there. There's about 17 to 18 spaces per two-page spread. And again, each two pages is a different theme. Um, like Stacy said earlier, if you don't have uh, enough pictures for that, that's okay. Take any one of those photo spaces, swap out some artwork or um, paper, add a journaling box to it, and you're all set. Um, also, I would encourage you to add journaling anywhere on the page so that you can actually just drag and drop a journaling box right next to the picture, let's say, of, of this young guy getting his car that just says what kind of a car it is um, or how old, you know, that he got a drum set, fifth birthday, wanted a new drum set. So feel free to add a text box um, anywhere. So we're just going to show you a couple more themes. Um, this one's friends through the years. And so it might be a preschool friend, um, favorite middle school friend, high school friends. Down below, you can see fun in the sun. If you live in a place where there's not tropics, you can remove that or just swap out the artwork. Um, what's great is that this book's been done with themes for just about everything, but maybe not the one thing you're looking for, right? So um, we're going to show you a few more examples. Um, here you can see that they, uh, up at the top, I made that design with the new Our Memories for Life uh, Joyous Noel um, layouts, but there's also a second Christmas theme in there that's more uh, traditional Christmas theme, you know. So it depends on if you like the primary look or the traditional look. You can choose which Christmas look you like. And if you celebrate Hanukkah or Kwanzaa or anything else, just change out the stickers. Um, down at the bottom, we've got school through the year, so that's a perfect place to put that school picture in front of the house or the, with a picture with their favorite teacher or on the mile run day. So you've got enough uh, spaces there to do the whole 12 years of school. 
And then as we go on a little bit further, you can see that I did puppy love, um, but it could be any pet. And all you have to do is take off the, the puppy love and you could make it be all kinds of pets. Honestly, when my kids were little, it seemed like we had a pet a pet farm in our house because we had rabbits and hamsters and gerbil and bird and fish. And so just to show all the different um, pets that we've had in our home through the years, that would be a fun spread to do. Um, let the games begin. Maybe your child is somebody who experienced all different sports as opposed to a child who played one sport consistently. So that's why that's just got a collection of all different kinds of sports through there. Um, or maybe they didn't even play on a team, but they just enjoy doing sports with you. Maybe they like to play tennis or go for a run. So again, it can just be a place where you celebrate um, them getting out and, and moving and doing something active. I think, do we have one more? Nope, that was it. Oh, okay, that's it. So there's all kinds of templates that are already done for you. There's um, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, dance, uh, just everything you could think of as themes. And that's going to show up in the template gallery. Right now it's set as a 12 by 12 story book, but it'll also be done as an 8 by 8 book. And um, super easy to just modify, remove the templates that you don't want, change out the artwork, uh, add a text box, and it should be pretty quickly uh, come together for you. It's wonderful, Helen. I think it's a great way to uh, capture all those times throughout the years because, like you said, sometimes it's just easier to say, okay, here's my favorite picture from that year, and or you want to remember that favorite pet or the sports team they played on. So this is a, a fun approach to capturing the years and uh, a great uh, graduation gift, too, if you do have someone going out. Or maybe it's something you start when they're a baby and now you just build on it every year. Yeah, and, and also one of the things, like as, as you're uploading pictures from your computer, your smartphone, your tablet, if you're using the Heritage Makers app, what you can do for this project is you can create a uh, folder that's called Toddler to Teen with albums underneath it for each theme, right? So you've got a theme for birthdays, a theme for, for Christmas, a theme for sports, and then as you find that favorite picture, you're like, oh, here it is, and you're scrolling through your phone, you just quickly upload it right to that folder and then when you get to your Heritage Makers account it's really quickly to go to the pictures in that folder and just drag them drop them and this has been such a lifesaver um, I've taught this in the tra traditional you know scrapbook printed world as well as the digital world and it's just been really a big time saver for people that don't have their pictures all organized and they don't really want to spend time doing that they're just highlighting their favorites from that type of a theme. So you don't have to put it together chronologically. And for a lot of people, that's a big relief off of their shoulders to not have to stress about that. I agree. There's something so um, freeing about knowing that you don't have to do it chronologically. So yeah. brilliant idea. Thank you so much, Helen, for sharing that with us. And we appreciate you uh, being willing to jump on for a minute tonight and explain that to us. Well, good. Thanks so much for having me. No problem. I'm going to mute you back again. Okay, we're going to go on to another one. And as Helen mentioned, we're going to get this added into the template gallery. It'll be in there sometime next week. This is another new one that uh, Brooke has been working on. It's called One Happy Year. And it's a 12 by 12 storybook. It is premier design. Um, and the idea behind this is that it's quick and easy to drop your things in. Um, it's uh, a grid system like most of these other ones have been. Um, and it is organized by month. So you'll see there's lots of room here. And I, I love that these are all squares because sometimes I get overwhelmed by having um, some rectangles and some that are vertical, some are portrait or, uh, sorry, portrait and vertical would be the same thing, horizontal or landscape. So it's kind of fun to have this opening page be all squares. Then as we dive into the months, you'll see that there's some artwork in here as well as a few backgrounds and lots of spaces to put your photos and lots of places to put text. So, you know, you probably don't want to print this with it saying add text here, add text here, but nice that there are places where you can easily add your journaling. And then the additional pages in this book come without photos so that you can just drop your photos in. So here's what February looks like. And then this next one shows us March as well as April. 
Um, if you want to, you can do themes like marches with family here, or you can swap it out to whatever the occasion is that you most celebrate that month, or you know, not have a theme at all. So just make it your own. Be flexible and enjoy it. And this last one we're going to show you is also going to be up available soon. It's a 5x5 five five storybook, and she's titled it Playful Snapshots. The idea behind this is um, those Instagram square photos, but maybe you don't want the white, all-white look of Instagram books that we see out there. And so this one's going to be a little bit different, but Snapshot Album is a great way to capture it. So here's the opening page. Um, it has a great little spot here to put your date in, drop your photo in, and some journaling. These are going to be really simple to put together because you are just dropping one photo per page. Uh, because it's a 5x5, five five, not a lot of room to play with um, adding lots of embellishments. If you want to keep the photo kind of the focus and, and a larger photo, you could do small you know, photos that are three inches or a couple inches. Um, but in the Instagram style with the squares, it is uh, nice to have that just be the main focus here. And then there are additional pages after these first ones that don't have photos in, so you can just drag and drop your photos in um, with a variety of different colors, which makes it really nice. So if you have a boy and you don't want to have flowers on it, well, there's some darker pages with splats and stars and things. So use the pages you like, and like Helen said, get rid of the ones that you know, are not maybe the pages that fit for your photos. Make it your own. Okay, we are going to dive into studio, and before we do that, I want to remind you that um, we are taking your questions of what you would like to see in studio. So if you there's something you've always wanted to see, uh, learn how to do in studio, make sure that you send that in as a question, and after Brooke goes through the first couple of things that um, she has planned, then I'll start feeding her some of the questions. I can see one or two right now. So if you've just joined us, that's your reminder that uh, we do want to see those things that you can do. So I'm going to swap this over to Brooke, and um, Brooke, I'm hoping, is going to be able to unmute herself. And Brooke, I'm handing you the computer. So I'm hoping that you're seeing this now. Can we I just see unmuted Brooke's myself screen? so everyone can hear okay. me. <laughs> And can everyone see Brooke's screen? Looking to see where my uh, little manager guy went for my webinar. And Chelsea's telling me she can see, so we're good to go. Okay, Brooke, it's all yours, and I'll go ahead and let you start, and then you give me the high sign when you're ready to take some questions. Okay, will do. Well, so I'm just going to show a couple of basics, like Stacy said. Um, I'm just going to open this 12 by 12 storybook, if you can see that here, um, just to give us something to start off of. So this is just a template that I opened. I haven't done anything in it yet, but assuming you want to start with a template instead of from scratch, I'm trying to get my little my little go-to webinar control panel will not go away, and it's right in the corner of my screen, so I'm trying to figure out how to make it go away. There we go. Okay. About that. Not sure if you guys could see that, but it was there. <laughs> okay, so assuming that we start with a template, what if you want to add pages? Say, I have a uh, we took a trip to Disneyland this year, and what if I want to add a spread of just Disneyland? Because these are all set up by months, but what if I want a Disney spread? Um, so if I open the manage pages, I don't know if you guys. Saw that. Sorry, I'm moving a little fast. I'll slow down. So the manage pages up here. If I want to add pages, remove pages, move them around, anything like that, I do in the manage pages. So if I open there, and say I want to add a spread. So if I click add page, it adds. It added one page, and then I clicked it twice, so it added two. But I want to move them up. We went in May. So let's see, January, February, March, April, May. So I want to put them up here right after May so that I know that's when we went to Disneyland. And then I tell it, done. Yes, save my changes. So see how easy it was just to add pages and then to move them into place. You can move any of these pages around, change the order however you'd like. 
And just to note, the design guide is here with all these helpful tip bubbles, but once you've read them, and you should read them and understand based on the different products that you're in, but once you really know what you're, what you're up against there, you can turn it off with this little design guide button and it just toggles it on and off. So if you decide you want to go back and read those at any time, you can turn it back on. And that's only for this session. If I open a different project at any time, those will be up again, just because we want to make sure that people know the different tips about the projects that they're in. And then also, let's see, okay. So I've got my blank page. What if I want to import a page from a template? So I've got one here in my templates. Let's find it. I believe it's called Full of Wonder. Yes. Okay, so I've got this template page that I want to just import exactly as is. So I found it here in my projects under my templates because I had selected it as a favorite. So that brought it into here. And I click on the page. There's only one. And then import page here. Yes, import this page. And it's just telling you that little window that pops up is telling you that if you've already got anything on the page, it will replace anything there. It won't be there anymore and there's no way to recover it. So it's just warning you that it will remove anything that was there. So I've imported this template page. And you'll notice it doesn't quite fit right. Um, and that's because 12 by 12 scrap pages, which is what this template was, are true 12 by 12. The books, the storybooks, the cover is true 12 by 12, so the pages are slightly smaller. They turn out to be just a little bit taller than they are wide. So if I want to get rid of this little trouble right here, I'm just going to do edit, select all, and it's locked. The pink border tells me that everything that I've selected is locked. So I'm just going to unlock it here with a little padlock in the toolbox. And then I can grab this edge here and just slide it in a little bit. I'm just going to give myself a little bit more clearance with the binding area right here. And that's just telling you basically this part of the page is going to be slightly hidden just because of the natural curve of the page. So it's better to avoid having anything pertinent like a face in that area. Face, text, anything that you really want to see clearly, keep it out of that area. So we've got this nice template page here. And then I've uploaded a few pictures, so I go in and let's see if I can find them. So I've got my pictures here. And then easy enough to just select the box. So this is unlocked. It's green. And then I lock it because it's easiest to swap out pictures or items when they're locked. That way they don't move around. And it gives you this really nice rectangle drop photo here to swap to be able to swap into. It just makes life a little bit easier. So then you take your picture, click it, and drag up right into that box. If I drag up not into the box, it'll just pop up on the screen. But I can just click delete, and that goes away. So if I want it in the box, just drag it right in there, and it'll swap it. Notice my picture is sideways. So a lot of times when you upload a picture that is portrait orientation, a lot of times our computers these days are smart enough to show us the picture the correct direction, but it doesn't save the picture that direction. They're all saved in a landscape orientation. So when you upload it, they're sideways, which can be problematic, but it's really easy to fix. While the photo's locked, go into the toolbox under the first tab that's Tools, and you click Adjust, and then right here you've got Scale and Rotation. So Rotation, you can type in 90 degrees, or sometimes, like you'll notice this other picture down here is rotated the other way. People tend to hold the cameras different directions, and so you get them either direction. But if it's that one, just type in negative 90 degrees, and hit enter, and it'll fix itself. And then, so I zoomed in a little farther than I would like, so I just take my scale here, and click it out a bit, and then I can just drag him to where he fits. Let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can see. So, I can move him around in there wherever I want. And you want to make sure, you can see the edge of the picture, make sure that it stays fully outside of that little blue line. If you come inside too much and you crop it, 
it won't fully go to the edge of the box. And that's not usually a problem unless you have, say, a border on it. If you've got a border on it and it, the picture isn't all the way to that edge, then you'll get this empty space. And that's not exactly what most people want when they have a border on the picture. So I'm just going to fix this. Again, it's back under Adjust while the picture is locked. And then I'll drag it back over so that it's behind that blue line. And then click out of it or click Done to crop it. So same thing. So if I take and I lock this one, and say I want this cute picture of my nephew crashed out for the second half of a day in Disneyland, and I just swap it in there. If I decide I want to zoom in at all, it's as easy as clicking, scaling it in a little bit, and moving it around, and I'm done. And just as easily, so you'll notice, if I zoom back out a little bit, this design has a lot of cute journaling cards. But what if I want more than three pictures? Just kind of like what Helen was saying, but in reverse. So I've got all these nice rectangles. So what if I want to swap out this one right here for a picture? And drop it in. And I'm going to again slide it over a little bit. And I can do as many pictures as I want on here. Easy as that. Let's see. So one last one. Swap it in. If the picture is not locked, picture or item, if you've got this green border, another way to swap them out, grab the picture first, and then hold down Control on your keyboard. If you're on a Mac, it's Command. If you're on a PC, it's Control. But you hold it down right as you drop the picture in. Make sure you're over what you want to swap it into. Again, this is a little more complicated of a way. Locking it gives it that really simple drop photo here to swap. But if it's not locked and you've already grabbed your picture, you can hold down control to swap it out. So, looks like we're good. We swapped out pictures. I can really call it good with that as it is. If I want to change out any art, it's the same as swapping out pictures. So, what if I don't know which art collection this came from? I can easily right click on one of the items and click Open Collection. Not taking a second to think, but it'll pull up the collection that all of those came from. And then if I want to swap out, like say this flower, I'm going to lock it. It'll give me the same thing. And what if I want, let's see. I like the flowers, but let's do this one. It's got a cute little Mickey. So I bring it up. I've got that same one. It says drop, here, drop art here to swap. Drop it right into that rectangle, and it'll swap it in. Swap in something that is not quite the same shape. So like, I'm guessing this bow here oh, is a slightly different shape. If I swap it into the box, it cuts off part of the bow. I don't know if you can see that. There's something really more obvious. Maybe like this. Will you zoom in on that and then you can see it easier? Good idea. I'm on a laptop, so I'm working with a trackpad. It makes life a little more complicated. Okay, so let's swap that bow back in. And then you can see it's kind of cutting off here on the top and a tiny bit on the bottom. So to fix that, the easiest way, unlock it, and then you can click Remove the Crop. And all it does is takes away the crop so that it jumps back to the shape that it's supposed to be. And that's a really easy way to just swap out anything in any place. So I can do the same thing. I can swap in, say, a button where this cute little circle is. And there it is. And the circle's the same size, but still, it'll give me that option to remove the crop. Not that it needs to be done, but it'll give that option anytime you swap something out just to be safe. And it does that with photos also. So like this one was a landscape photo, but I swapped it into a portrait spot. If I unlock it, it'll give me that remove option. But obviously I don't want to do that right now just because it's this perfect shape. So I'm going to leave it there. So also with importing page, I wanted to show, we get a lot of questions about the drop to swap pages. 
that are really helpful if you design your pages in a different software or if you've got uh, traditional pages that you've designed that you want to put into a digital product. It makes it really easy. I'm going to, so I've got one that I uploaded here. Let me see if I can find it. Okay. I've got, oh, I guess it would help to put the drop to swap in there first. Stacy, keep me from losing my mind tonight. Okay. So Sorry, you didn't tell me in advance I had to do that. I know, geez. <laughs> okay. Drop to swap. And there's two different kinds. Helen can explain this better, but we've already let her go. There's two different kinds of drop to swap pages. We've got one that's kind of a full bleed page, and then the drop to swap two options have a black border. You can make your page inside it any size. I'm going to show you with this one, but it it makes it so that okay, let's show it first. That makes a little more sense. Okay, so if I open one of the pages, and I want one of the right-facing pages um, just because it'll make it a little easier with that finding area. But then I just import it. Yes, import this page. And it'll drop it in. Okay. So like I said, you can make this a little bit larger if you'd like and give more of a border or even smaller or however you'd like depending on the size of your book and the size of the image that you've got but it gives it this nice border so that you're not having to worry about this binding area infringing on your design. It just makes it a little simpler. So if I click on it and it's locked, I get that drop folder here to swap, and then I go to my uploaded pre-designed page and drop it right in there, and there it is. And so it's all designed. I can add embellishments to this if I want, or I can just keep it as is designed. I can unlock it and make it larger. Now you'll notice I, I cheated. This is just a little JPEG of the page. So the border that it's showing me is orange, which is not good. Realistically, it would be happy being very, very small. But I'm just showing you for the sake of this. When you upload things, you will want to pay attention to the color of your border. Keep it in the green and yellow if possible, and stay away from orange and red borders just to help with the clarity when your item is printed. That's the same with I, with embellishments, with photos, anything. Pay, pay attention to the color of your border. So I've got this black border on here. I can go into the, the toolbox under effects and grab a fill color and well, give me this little ink dropper. I can select any color I want from off of here. So let's say I want that nice blue. And that way I've got that that space covered. It looks nice, and when it prints, that way you'll be able to see the full redesigned page. So, so I've got the binding areas covered, so the, none of this will be going into the binding. If it was a full bleed design, you can see how a little bit of this would be into the binding area, which might be a little bit of a problem depending on what you've got over there. So it's nice that Helen gave us these versions that have that extra space just to be safe. Okay. I'm trying to remember what I wanted to show. I'm looking at my list here. Oh, one last thing I didn't show. So the toolbar right here, when you've got something selected, it'll show you options based on what you've got selected. If I go back into here. So different things will give me different options. What is it in text on this page? Go down to here. Text gives you different options, for example, than an item, a background paper, anything like that, just because the text will give you font options and sizing and anything like that. Um, if you don't like where that's sitting, if you don't like that it's there, you can turn it off temporarily with this little X, or when you click on something again, it'll pop back up. If you don't like it at all and you want it to go away, just go up to View, and you can uncheck Toolbar. If you prefer the toolbar and you want the toolbox to go away, the same is true. You can make it disappear. And it's easy to turn them back on if you change your mind. 
I tend to use the toolbox just because it's what I'm used to. So I generally turn off the tool because I don't like it popping up when I'm I don't like it popping up on front of my design. So whichever your preference is, it's easy to turn off the one that you don't like. Okay, I did Stacy grab a couple of questions from the question uh, question box that people submitted. So I do have a couple. Okay. So for one thing, someone asked about paste format. This is really helpful. So say I've got all these pictures and they've got a, back, uh, a drop shadow on them, but I don't want a drop shadow. If I turn off the drop shadow on one, so it doesn't have a drop shadow at all, and then I copy it, and then if I hold down shift, I can select all these other rectangles and even any of the items, anything you want, and go up to edit, paste special, paste format, and notice how it took the, the drop shadow off of all of those. The same would be true if I had a fill color on any item and then I copy it. Again, holding down shift, select all of these, edit, paste special, paste format. It'll do the same thing no matter what the formatting is, whether it's rounded corners, a fill color, a drop shadow, any of these effects really whatever is applied to the item you have copied when you do paste format on anything else it will apply all of these here so any of these are all at once so are there any questions on that before we move on Stacy not so far nope okay let's see okay and then the other question that I grabbed someone was asking I'm going to close this and they gave the example of a set of notepads. So the notepads, and I just threw this design together really quick so I can show this. Um, the notepads, you have four separate designs. So you get four different notepads. Well, what if I design one notepad and then I want to copy the same design, even just to change around a little bit, but I want to copy the same design onto the other three notepads. The easiest way, and there are two ways to do this. Yes, I can, let's show this. I'm going to turn the design guide off just so we have a little bit more space to see. So the easiest way is to drag, and you drag from white space all the way across, and it'll select all of these together. You can also do it by holding down shift, but depending on the amount of items that you have on there, it might be hard to select everything just by clicking one at a time. So it's nice to be able to just click and drag and select everything and then copy and go on to the next one. If you were to just click paste, it won't paste it in the exact same spot. It jumps a little bit so that if you were to click paste, you can see that you pasted something. It's not, it's not in the same spot. So if you see it, it jumps a bit. So I'm going to click delete and get rid of that. The best way to do it is to go to edit, paste special again, but this time we're going to do paste in place and it'll drop it exactly in the same location. So you'll see the location is the same. And then the exact same thing on the other two. Paste in place. And the last one, edit, paste special, paste in place. And then if you want to open up, so again I'm going to right click, open collection. Sometimes it will do this. So I'm going to show you, this was from this gorgeous Lovebirds Fall collection that we have. So say I've got this design, and I want the same basic layout on all of these, but I want to kind of change each, each of them up a little bit. So say this background, I want to be this pretty orange. Again, we're going to lock it, simplify things, drop right here to swap. And then we'll do this pretty orange. Again, I can do control if it's not locked, and it swaps out the same. And then we find some kind of item. So instead of this one, I'm going to lock it. And what if I want these pretty birds? And it's cutting off a little bit. So I'm going to unlock it and remove the crop. And I just completely changed up the design. If I want to 
click it up a bit to hide that seam. That's really easy to do just with the arrow keys on my keyboard. Save it, and it'll update the thumbnail over here so that you can see it. And then you've got two matching but different designs, and you can do that the same thing on the other notepads. So the easiest way, again, just drag select, copy, and then you'll go to edit, paste special, paste in place. And that's the easiest way to copy the design across all of them. Uh, the notepads, you'll notice, do not have the manage pages tool, generally because there's only four notepads. But if you're in a book and want to do the exact same thing, you can just go to the manage pages. Here, in fact, we'll show you in a book, because we can. So if I designed a page for my storybook, and I do this all the time when I'm making books, just because it simplifies things so much to be able to just duplicate the page over and over and then change things around. So say I've got this page here. And we could do it the old way of dragging, select, copy, paste, special, paste, and place. But that's really quite cumbersome with a lot of items and a lot of pages. So you can just go to Manage Pages, click your page, and duplicate page. And you'll notice it does bump things. So what was a left-hand page is now a right-hand page, unless you add another page, so that that way they're pulled back up correctly. In some designs it doesn't matter, in some designs it does, so it all depends on what you're doing. But that's the easiest way to duplicate a design in projects that have the managed pages. Most of them do, but not all of them do. So that's why you can also do the pay special paste in place. So either trick will work in any project, but whichever your preference is. And then say, again, pages. So if I like the changes I've made, then I can click Done. If, for example, I accidentally selected a few pages, I just did that by holding Shift, and I accidentally removed some pages that I don't want gone, you can click Cancel and tell it to discard your changes. And that'll exit out without making any actual changes. So just a good tip. Do we have any other questions that have come in yet, Stacy? Yep. So this book is a great place to probably do this. Um, can you show uh, when a line in Distribute would be good to use? Um, this person saying it's kind of confusing. So, and I agree, there are times you look at it and you go, what am I doing? <laughs> I completely agree. It's actually one of my favorite tools, but it does take some getting used to. Um, if you look in, in the Support Center, there's actually a couple of really good articles that have little video tutorials. But the best thing with the line and distribute is just to play with it yourself. So let me show, actually, this grid right here is kind of perfect. Um, and Roxanne created this grid, so it's I, I have to tell my brain how to move things around. But we'll just go with it. So for example, if I want these all nice and lined up with this beautiful straight line through the middle, and what if this one's way out of whack? Aha, hang on. See, this is why Roxanne and I uh, differ in some things. So Roxanne, to create her nice lines, has created a border. And that makes it so no matter where you move it around, you have that nice border. But notice, even then, your line isn't quite true unless it's exactly lined up. So say I want this back into place, but I don't know quite how to get it perfectly lined up. If I click the first one in the line, hold down Shift, and select the other two, so I've got all three of these boxes selected, then I'm going to unlock them so that I get the Align and Distribute options. I'm going to do two first item, and again, the different articles go over the different all the different buttons here and what they do, but two, you've got two group, which will take into account all of them, You've got two first item, which aligns based on the first item you selected. Or you've got two page, which is really most helpful if you want to center something on the page or make sure something is in the dead center of any side. That's when two page is most helpful. Something like this, I'm going to do two first item, which is this middle button. So two first item. And then I want to align 
middle, so you can see where the line is, it's showing you the line that it's going to align upon, which is right here. So I'm going to do a line middle, and that'll jump it up so they're all lined up. Ah, oh, Roxanne. Okay, instead of a line middle, because they are not all the same, they're not all the same height, so you can see how a line middle didn't quite line it up, right? So instead, so two first item, and then do a line top. Oh, did I click all of them? Did I click all of them? Two first item. That's not moving. I should use one of my own one of my own projects so that I know they're the same size. So we'll just do this. Over two. And from the same height. Okay. So again, hold down shift, select them all, two first item, align middle. See how my line's all nice and straight. And then to make them distribute properly, so I'm going to do space. And the space is really helpful when you're trying to make sure that they're all evenly spaced. And since they're sitting this direction, it's spaced horizontally, and that'll jump it right into place. You'll notice her line's not quite straight here, probably because this one is overlapping a little bit. So if I take these ones here, and I can just take one of these, and then hold down shift and select the little blue box that's being tricky, unlock so that it can move, two first item, and a line left. And again, she's got... Next time, Stacy, remind me to use one of my own templates. <laughs> <laughs> Roxanne is confusing me because of those borders. Yeah, it's hard when you don't work with your own templates. Let's see if we can just make this a little less confusing. What do you say? Okay. We're just going to grab, say, let's see, a photo. Let's see what we got. Oh, baby pictures. All right. Okay. We're just going to do this. This might make it a little easier. So I'm going to copy and paste a couple of these so that we've got a couple to work with. So if I want these nice and evenly spaced on the page, give yourself plenty of space so that they will have space in the middle if you want a gap at all. If not, then you can put them closer together. But I'm going to click the first one, hold down shift, click the others. I know these are all the same size, so when I do two first item, I can do to the left, I can do to the middle, I can do to the right. They're all going to jump. They're all going to sit there the exact same no matter what because they're the same size. And then space, so space vertically because they're up and down this time. And that'll give us those nice spacings without having to do borders that are complicated and tricky, just spacing. Same thing if I want to do them this direction. And what if they're different sizes because we've got not a lot of space to work with and the photos are looking kind of big. So these are all completely different sizes. If I click the first one and then the other two, to first item. Notice when I do top or middle or bottom, you can see where they're aligning to. And then same thing, horizontally, no matter what, if they're different sizes, if you use space, it'll just take into account the spacing between the items and it will make it even. If you're using distribute, Distribute is best when they're the same size, at least in the direction that you're accounting for. Otherwise, if I try to do distribute center on these based on the center of each, notice it's not quite even. Or distribute based on the left, even worse. Same with distribute on the right. So space will give you a nice even spacing no matter what, even if they are close enough to be touching. So see, they're even overlapping a bit just because this smallest one is on top of the other two. I can move it down so that it's under the other two. It doesn't make much of a difference, but they're spaced evenly. So similarly, 
a really easy way to make a nice grid. Do we have to, I've got time. I'm going to show you guys how to make a quick grid just because it really makes it nice to be able to do grids in your projects. So I'm going to let's see, I'm going to use a square photo because we're on a square page and it'll be much easier to show. So if I take this and I'm going to make it square. So notice I can type in here. I unlocked it so that I could type in anything and make it a square. And my photo is a little squished. So I'm going to come down here. And I'm using control, but you can lock it as well. I'm just trying to be faster. Um, and swap out my picture, and then it'll make it so it's not squished anymore, no matter which picture you swap in. So then, copy and paste. And I'm going to paste two of them. So I've got three pictures, plenty of space. OK. So if I grab these and align middle and then space, and I've got this nice line. And then I can select them, copy, and you can paste and then just align them that way. Or, nice way of doing it, if you copied them there, you can edit, paste special, paste in place, and then just hold down shift and you can slide them down. And then if I do the same thing twice, paste in place. And I've got this annoying, annoying to me toolbar. Again, not my favorite thing in the world, but preference. Slide it down. So just to clarify, you're holding down the shift key so they don't shift. move left to right as you. So. No, not quite. So if I just hit the up and down arrow keys, they move very slowly, and you can't hold it down. See how slowly it's moving up, but I'm clicking mm -hmm. fairly quickly. If I hold down shift, it jumps in larger segments, or you can hold down the arrows, and it'll slide. So it's just a, a quicker way of moving things across the page. Perfect. By holding down shift. And then... So if I want them evenly spaced, this direction, again, I'm going to go space. And I actually had them pretty close, but my, my spacing's a little big. So I move this one closer to give myself a little more space. And then evenly space. Well, that's a little closer. Let's do one more. One more tiny bit. Grab these three again. Space vertically. And then I just click the first one in each line to first item, line middle. Same with this bottom one, just because it moved a little bit to first item, middle. And I've got a nice evenly spaced grid. And then I can grab the whole thing, and if I want to make the whole thing bigger or smaller, or since I've got them all selected, I can move it around wherever I want. But that's okay. Last that's thing to show. Favorite. Yeah, that's my Since favorite Since you're doing this whole selecting. Ones. Yeah, that's a perfect way to do that. So if you had a background paper on there, what is your favorite way to select things so that you don't move the background paper as well? Ah, okay. So if I've got a background paper, let's just grab one from one of these cute anthology collections. So I'm going to put it up here. And notice it's on top. So I'm going to make it nice and big. And I'm going to use my to page and center it just because I tend to be perfectionist with centering things. But then I moved it to the back with send to back. So if I am trying to move around, say, the background paper or another item and I don't want to mess up my grid, the best thing to do, I'm going to drag select so I'm not clicking and moving any of them. And then I can hold down shift and deselect the background so I just have my grid. But the best thing to do would be to lock them so they can't move around. And the same thing if you're trying to not move your background around or if you've got a more complicated design and you don't want to move any of these specific grid pieces, the best thing to do is to keep them locked. 
And it also makes it easier when you're swapping things out, like we showed before. But that way you're not accidentally grabbing something and moving it out of place and then having to figure out how in the world it was in the right spot like we were doing before. <laughs> And I think the key too there is that when you were, um, if you accidentally select something you don't want, hold your shift key down and click on the thing you don't want selected and it will unselect it. So it's a toggle, click on it, select it, click on it again and it unselects it. Yes, exactly. So if I'm holding down shift and I select multiple things, and oops, I selected the text box but I didn't want to, I can hold down shift again and deselect it and then go about my business. Same thing here, text box grab all my boxes and that way I've just got the boxes selected. So same thing, and the question, hold down shift to select or Yeah, the question just came up, so would the undo button work where you just move that gray box and it would work as long as you didn't make any other changes after you move that yes. gray box? Yep, exactly. And you That's can use the, like the keyboard <laughs> control C or edit undo, which it will tell you here the keyboard shortcuts. Any hey, that was all the questions we had so far, so I think we're good. Awesome. Okay, I'm going to take control back of the uh, screen, and while we're doing that, um, let's see, I'm making me the presenter. Show my screen. And now I just need my PowerPoint back. So you don't have to see Hazel there anymore. Not that she's not cute, but you know. Okay, I forgot to give away <laughs> some points earlier, so we're going to give away points again to Betty Decker. Betty Decker, we're going to give you uh, 20 points. So uh, thanks for showing up for class. Now, I want to finish up the evening by showing you some sneak peeks of uh, two collections that we're bringing into studio for January. The first one is a basic set, and this one is called Everyday 2015 June. Now, don't let be alarmed by the fact it says June. Just focus on how cute those designs are. And this is just two of the uh, sections that I'm showing you. There are also some um, frames and uh, some watercoloring looking backgrounds. There's a whole bunch of stuff in this set. So look for the Everyday 2015 June set and it is basic so you don't have to be Premiere to see this one. And then in our Premiere group we're going to have one that's called Pocket Life 15 January. Um, and again this is just showing you a portion of what you're going to get in this uh, set. Some papers, lots of embellishments, some photo pocket, uh, I'm sorry, Yes, some photo pocket scrapbooking pages, those journaling cards, lots and lots of fun things that you can do with those. So watch for those coming in January. Some new artwork. We have some additional collections as well, but this is just your teaser so that you'll go look for all that new stuff. And I'm going to give away uh, our final set of points for the evening, and these are going to Cheryl Nurse. Cheryl Nurse, we're going to give you 20 uh, publishing points for showing up at class tonight. Now, it is the end of the year and we are working on the schedule for 2016 so the next studio class will be in January. Watch for an announcement about what the date and topic will be um, and we'll look forward to seeing you then. In the meantime, enjoy your holidays, enjoy your families, make sure you're capturing all those special moments um, at least in photos. Make sure you back them up, upload them someplace so that you have them ready to go when you're ready to start working on your projects in January. I know how busy December gets. And so other than gifts, I don't know about you, but I don't do much anything else. So get those memories recorded so that you have them ready to put into a book uh, with the new year. Thanks again for showing up and have a wonderful evening and we will see you in 2016. Thanks again. Bye.